Gleason Tebow versus Rory McDonald. Guys, this has been the talk. This has been the talk of the town. They fight in the PFL on, I believe, Thursday. I had wrestling all weekend. Destiny had districts on a Friday, but, but then that makes me think Friday is Saturday and Saturday. So I got my days all off. I think they fought on Thursday. My point is the same. Gleason Tebow wins. It was a decision. Now, that was a big surprise. That was a surprise to everybody, including, respectfully, Gleason Tebow. Gleason Tebow said those exact words. He said, it was a surprise to beat Roy McDonald. So everybody who watched the fight, right? Now, how, can that ever be true? I'm using the collective, the broad stroke everybody. I haven't read from one single reporter, and I haven't even read one fan online through social media. I haven't heard from any of the coaches. I haven't heard from Rory or Gleason Tebow anything other than Roy should have won that fight. But the three judges said otherwise. And I believe it was a unanimous decision. Three judges said otherwise. Now, I spoke to Rory's people. I get a phone call from Rory's people that say, we were told in writing, and I don't know what that means, by the way, because nobody writes anymore. I'm assuming that means they were text. I'm assuming that means they were emailed. We were told, I'm repeating the story, we were told in writing the day before this fight, do not let it go to the judges or you will lose. And they've saved this message. Now, that's interesting. You have my attention. I love a good conspiracy theory. Who was the author of the message? That would be very relevant. That I don't know. I haven't been told. Why? Why was the threat made? And I got to tell you, I've been told this a hundred times. Do not let it go to the judges. Do not let it go to the judges. You won't win a decision. I mean, right, it just went one step further. Everybody tells people don't let it go to the judges. So as much as I want to have a conspiracy over what I believe was a text message sent the day prior, I'd like there to be a story here, but I don't have one. I don't have one. And what do you do if you get a bad call? Is there such a thing? It's very tough. I, I put myself, let's, if I was judging a fight, I'm a professional. I'm an expert. I am licensed through the commission. I am given the best seat in the house and I judge a fight and you tell me I got it wrong. But the two other guys who are the only two other guys who are experts, who are licensed, who are professionals and who are seated cage side by the commission, if they see it the same way that I saw it, you're going to have a hard time telling me I'm wrong, aren't you? But isn't that going to, isn't that going to put you in a very tough spot to tell me? that I'm wrong when the only two other experts in the room saw what I saw. And that's always been the trouble with fighting in terms of the judges, in terms of the criteria, anything in life where people are judging people, gymnastics, rodeo, anything in life, diving, anything where people are judging people, it's never going to be fair, but it's still the way it is. So what do you do? What do you do if you're Rory? Rory has said he'd like for there to be an investigation. But who's going to investigate it? If it was a commission heir and the commission is in charge of it, then the commission, you see the problem? Who investigates the investigators? Who oversees the overseers? Who teaches the teachers? It's just one of those things. I don't have the answer, but you don't have it either. It's a really tough spot. Was there an error made? First off, who says? Three people, the only three people, all agree with each other. And the one thing that they have separated themselves from everybody else that watched is they're licensed. So they are held to a higher standard and they agreed with each other. So was it wrong to start with? See where it becomes a problem? When Gleason Tebow comes out and says he was surprised for, okay, maybe there's somewhere to look. Now, even if we were to investigate something, with what mechanism do we remedy it? Is there a mechanism in place outside of the proof of corruption? Not that I know of. Unless you can prove corruption, and that has happened in sport before. That has happened. As the Olympics are, are, are coming upon us, that, that happened in both with the boxers, which Teddy Atlas called out, but NBC happened to have video rolling as the money traded hands, and it happened with the wrestling. And the security came in. Again, NBC just happened to have cameras going and picked up the money exchange. And the International Olympic Committee brought in security, removed them from judging, removed them from the facility, but he removed them from Olympic Village, the end. Nobody was prosecuted. Those athletes 
that were duped over. There was no compensation. They did not get a redo. There was no set. That's just, that's where it was called. I do not believe with any part of me that there is any world of likeliness that somebody set out to corrupt a PFL event on a Thursday night between Gleason Tebow and Rory McDonald. The text message that Team Rory is in possession of in writing a day before that said, do not let it go to the judge. I mean, that's interesting. I can give you that it's interesting. I don't know that I can draw a bridge between anything more than a coincidence, possibly a pep talk. I mean, I, I've, I've been given that pep talk by my father before, before a fight. Hey, don't let it go to those judges. Damn it, you take care of business yourself. I mean, that's a pep talk. I don't think if I, one would have gone the wrong way, I'd go, Dad, you were giving me a warning. What did you know? I, coincidence. Pep talk. Guy stuff. I would be very curious. Who was the author of that? Who authored this thing? With what knowledge did they have? Corruption's a very hard thing to prove. Somebody with having an opinion? Come on, we're human beings. You never had the wrong opinion? Yes, you have. Yes, you have. So have I. Three of them got it all at the same night. I had a really weird one. Josh Near. Josh Near had done a fight, and it was a split decision. One judge favored Near. And when they read off the results of the fight, Near turns and shrugs. Going, what do you think? When they said that he won, Near Near turns and shrugs and makes a face. No, I didn't. Who gave that? Who gave that to me? I talked to that judge, and I said, you know, kind of hard for you to say you're right when Near disagrees with you. And the judge pushed back, and the judge said, I don't know that Near was in a position as a participant in the fight to have the best perspective to who was winning. <laughs> I remember sitting there going, okay, we, we, just, we just touched on five dimensions. And it appears that we're not going to be able to have an open conversation on this. And it's, it's one of those things, guys. Can we as a community feel bad for Rory? Sure. Can Gleason Tebow as a sportsman tip his hat and say, Rory? We're going to go by the judges. I got you tonight, but I know what really happened. Sure. But is there a mechanism in place to remedy a call that the community disagrees with? The answer is no, but a deeper is should there be? My opinion? No. I love the sport the way it is. I think it is subjective. I understand that. I understand that when people judge people, it isn't fair. I understand all of these things. I also would just acknowledge, much like the chains in football, some go your way and some don't. And over the course of the game, at least in theory, it all equals out. That's good enough for me. I've heard the arguments that only former fighters should be judges. I have the foggiest idea where, where it, anywhere in life that would be true. I hear that there should be seven judges by, by ringside, which is the displacement of responsibility. You're displacing it. I'll be the only judge. They want to have three right now, and some people want to have five, and some want to have seven, and two want to have two more in the back, and then we're all going to meet about meeting and talk about ta uh, talking. We're going to have an arbitration for it. I'll come forward. I'll tell you who won the fight. The end. And do you want to know why that doesn't happen? That doesn't happen because no uh, commission wants to put that on one person. No commission could find that one person with the courage to stand up and say, this is the guy that won. They couldn't do it. I go to amateur wrestling. We have the hardest time in home duels where we're on the road, we're in somebody else's home. Because if that crowd begins to react, the referee will make a call that the referee would not have made had the crowd not have been there. It's a very real piece of human nature. One of the reasons the fights have been so great lately one of the reasons the fights have been so great without a crowd is the fighters were one more at home, but two, the referees did less. You want a referee to pull you off the cage or to stand two guys up? No problem. It's not inactivity. It's that the crowd starts to object and then the referee will step in. Stay out of it. Let these two boys fight. I understand mistakes are going to be made. I'm just offering my opinion.
that of all of the ways you could possibly do it, I think what we have right now, three people at ringside, the whole 10-9 must system and why we took that from Bob, I, I'm always open to new conversations. But while those conversations are being had, I haven't heard a better suggestion. So as much as we love to complain until we're making suggestions, even in the case of Roy versus T-Bow, who everybody, including T-Bow, T-Bow, very honorable of him. I mean, I must tell you, I've always liked Gleason T-Bow, but that was a stud move right there. He admitted, he admitted, eh, should have given it to, to McDonald. There's not a mechanism in place. And as far as Rory's team being contacted in writing the day before, I don't know, man. Don't leave it to the judges. That, that sounds like a pep talk, not a warning.